Hey Inns, how you doing? I was just wanting to stop in real quick. I have a fully finished object that I need to give as back to the gift person, to the recipient, because I took it back from them after I give, gifted it to them um, so I could fully, fully finish it. So this is my modern folk embroidery Ave Maria pillow. And all I had left to do was to add the cording. So I went ahead and finished making, I, I created my own cording using the DMC color that uh, was used in the stitching as well as a Krynik. And I do not know what the Krynik color is, but it is kind of similar in color to the back of the pillow. And I went ahead and made that. And I really like the texture that it has because the Krynik is a little bit thinner than the DMC. So it gives it a nice two texture, two, two density texture on the pillow. And then I went ahead and couched that on. So very pleased with that for my very first pillow with cording. Again, this is a modern folk embroidery, Ave Maria. There's the bottom. Just a nice decorative pillow. So, hope you like that. Just wanted to check in with you, just to show that because I'm gonna give that back to my friend so that he can put that on his mantle or wherever he decides to put it. So, see you guys later. We're gonna go with this, even though you might be able to hear some noise. Outside. Because there is a lot of maintenance people doing yard work right now and I've been waiting for over an hour to be able to film the rest of this video for y'all and uh, I'm not gonna wait any longer because I have things I need to get done today so first thing first I started the video with the clip of my modern folk embroidery piece that turned out amazing and the recipient was very very pleased with that so uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, I guess I could say proud of what I accomplished with that piece with being my first pillow that I did cording for and I've had many people ask regarding the cording I used Bana's the twisted stitchers tutorial on how to use the Krynik tool, which I don't have here, uh, that I purchased at my local LNS, local needle workshop. Um, so, and it's super easy. The first time I used it, I did do it with a friend or with a co-worker co at work. And then I wasn't happy with that one, so I brought it home and I did a second batch of cording that I ended up using on the pillow independently on my own and I did it following Vonna's tutorial of uh, hooking it to a hook in my house and it worked out perfectly so if I can do it y'all can do it so make sure you go and if you're interested in trying that out go get the tool and um, I'm, I'm sure most of your your needle workshops or you can order it online so uh, Give it a try. It's super easy. Okay, so we are going to do, first things first, I got a package in the mail today from Michelle, which is Maine Moose Mom, I think is her, I didn't look it up. I'm sorry, Michelle. Uh, I know Maine and Moose and Mom are all in her Instagram name. 
Maine Moose Mom Stitcher on Instagram. So she messaged me and said that she had something small she wanted to send me and she wanted to uh, ask if she could have my address and I was like, yeah, why not? Um, because she's always participating in my my live videos and she's become a good friend through Instagram so I'm honored that she thought of me to send me a little something. So I hope I didn't just cut all of that up. So here we go. I have an, I have no idea what she sent me. She's, I got her permission. She said to go ahead and open it up on, on the air. So thank you very much, Michelle. Um, but I have piles of stuff everywhere because of the video that we're going to do today. So again, this is post birthday Palooza. Yesterday was my birthday. Today we're going to continue the birthday fun and um, do the videos for the end of the month. So this is an interesting paper. Uh, did you make this on your own for packaging or um, did you buy this somewhere to help for packaging? So weird, but cool. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by uh, her packaging paper. Very cool. Where'd you? Uh, I'm, I'm curious, Michelle. You're gonna have to uh, message me and let me know about this. Or am I like out of the loop and don't know about something? Okay, so here we go. We got a card, and uh, we finally got down to the nitty gritty. But I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to keep things organized today because of all the piles I have going on here. So. Oh, very lovely card. Isn't that a beautiful lighthouse landscape card? That would definitely be very nicely. Um, very nice. Thank you, Michelle. And I don't know. What is it? Oh, how nice. It's a gray squirrel stitched up. Thank you, Michelle. So cute. Very nicely framed and everything. Very nice. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm going to have to find a nice place for that. Okay. Now on to the good stuff. Not that this isn't good, but you know, the rest of the video, the rest of the good stuff. Thank you again, Michelle. Okay. Okay. We're going to do a project parade because now that I have worked down all of my projects that I had set for goals for my birthday palooza so I could have a new start I thought it would be fun for the day after my birthday to do a project parade you're welcome Nicole for not saying the word that we don't like and um, so you can all see what every where everything is at because some of the things I haven't worked on in quite a while so it'll be good to see where everything is at and um, get a bearing as to where I need to go to from here. So I've gathered everything up. I'm surprised as how few website projects I actually have. How few projects I have. Um, I thought I had more than this. But apparently I don't, which is a good thing. So uh, we're going to start from oldest to newest. So the very the oldest project that I have is my Heaven and Earth Designs Henry VIII.
artwork by Hans Holbein, Hans Holbein, and of course this is charted by Michelle Sayed at, at Heaven and Earth Designs. I am stitching this on 28 count 1 over 1 white Lugana, so 28 count white Lugana 1 over 1 with the call for DMC. And this is where he is at. Still getting used to the new camera, so it's a, it's a reverse, so I'm getting used to it. So there is Henry. Very, very pleased with how he's looking so far. I have to finish these two rows, and then I have one more row underneath. So one, two, three, four, five. Five more pages and two small pages on each of these rows. And so five pages plus two, five, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have 10 full pages and three columns of 12 to finish this out. So five or 10 pages and like a third of a page. So 10 and one third pages, we'll say. So the next page I'm going to work on will probably be this one right here where, but maybe this one up here. Again, these are, these three pages here are a lot of confetti. So that will be slow going, but well worth it when it is all done. And I know my brother is looking forward to this one also being done. So this one will be going on to the stand today because I really want to get moving on him. And I think this is what I want to work on next. So I'm going to put him over here out of the way. So that is my heaven and earth designs. Next will be my second project that is on the go is my London by Thea Governor. I started this for my birthday project last year. This is on 18 count black Ada, one over one with the called for threads that came in the kit. I believe they're DMC as well. And I have taken it off of the Q-snap because I believe I'm going to put it away for now, but I think whenever I pull it out, because my main focus is going to be Henry. Excuse me. But whenever I do pull London out again, I think I'm going to reposition the Q-snap, and I'll explain why here as soon as you see it. So here is London. So I have one of the the cent center part, the entire center section of St. Paul's Cathedral or St. Paul's Cathedral done, as well as this tower here. I have Parliament done. And I think what I'm going to do next time I pull this out is that I want to work on As you can see, I have these two sections here of St. Paul's done. And I think I'm going to come over and work on the other the other tower of St. Paul's here to get the, the tower done. And then I'm going to move and work over this way. So I want to move over and work over in this section here because these are the buildings I like the best. 
I think. Not that I like them the best, but I think they're the prettiest because of the colors that I, I enjoy. Uh, so I think I want to save these ones. I want to save this side for last. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way over this way and complete this side first. So again, here is where London is to this point. Very happy with that. Coming along very nicely. Again, that is 18 count. One over one. Just going to fold it up here so I keep everything nice and organized. Okay, moving on. My third project in my project parade is my, and I'm not quite sure which one I started first of the next two, but I'm fairly certain it was this one, but they were very close together. And this was at the beginning of January that I started these next two the end of December, the beginning of January. So it is my mushroom sampler that I am stitching along with Elena B. And many others who are also stitching motifs from this. This is a design that uh, a pattern kit that we purchased from a shop in France and had shipped to America. And here is my progress so far. So, so far I have two of the motifs done. Again, um, for some reason I can't seem to get handle on this camera. Anyways, there we go. Two motifs done. And it's turning out lovely so far. Very happy with this. And I'm getting used to this linen, even though it's not my favorite linen. It is 28 count. I'm guessing it's like an off-white or cream linen. It's 28 count, and it's 2 over 2. Yes, it's 2 over 2, and I believe these are also DMC threads that are used. So, last time, one more time, mushroom sampler. So I will be working on this again soon. These little motifs up here at the top really didn't, this one only took me two days to stitch. So it probably won't take me any time at all to work on, like if I'll pull maybe as like a um, palette cleanser from all of the confetti from Henry and everything. This will be another nice one to work on occasionally to change things up a bit. So, you know, to pull this one out on maybe a weekend or something and quickly stitch up a motif. So. Then we move on to my, my shadowing, the Tea House Challenge Shadowing. I am going to insert a picture here. This picture, or this shadowing is 
is the one that I have worked on the least amount amount in recent months because I put it away to really focus on London and Henry. So I would like to get back to this, but again, because it is very similar in nature to Henry, I don't want to do both of them too close together at this point in time just because I don't want to get overwhelmed with confetti and one over one on 28 count. So again, this is um, this again is 28 count and I believe this is gold sand. I don't have the tag on me right now, but I believe this is gold sand 28 count by XJU Designs or XJU Designs. And uh, this is the the tea house itself is stitched one over one, and everything else is stitched two over two. And that's why it's called a challenge because I guess for many people one over one on 28 count is a challenge. So here is where it is at so far. I'm very pleased with it. And I would like to get back to it. But I'm in no hurry to work on. I'm no hurry. I'm in no hurry to finish this one. I would. Re I really would like to get Henry done first because it, I've been working on Henry for so long now. So at some point, I will get back to my Chatelaine. Just not sure when. And finally, my last start, or my last project, I only have five, Henry, London, Henry, London, Mushrooms, Chatelaine, and my new start, my birthday new start. So, and that is my By the Bay Needle Art, 13th Calling. And so I started down here in the bottom left hand corner. And that's, I've never actually ever started in the bottom left hand corner before, but because the top left hand corner is all open, except for this cloud, but you have to do a lot of counting to get down to it. Uh, and the majority of the stitching is at the bottom. I figured the best place to start was at the bottom. Now this is on a 46 count Rocky Mountain by XJU Designs or XJU Designs. It is, the fabric is 29 by 19. Now the finished design size is going to be, because I'm doing all three consecutive right beside, so it's going to be a panorama, is going to be 26 by 6. So I'm going to have a whole lot of extra space on the top and the bottom, but I'm only going to have an inch and a half on each side, which is kind of a bummer, but it'll 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 do for framing. I'm not that concerned about it. But it um again because of that, I wanted to ensure that I had exactly an inch and a half in from the edge to start. So that's why I started in that bottom left hand corner. And I've actually made a decent amount of progress in the first day since yesterday. So there is my progress on project number five, by the bay, 13th colony, part one. And this is where it's going to be put away for now. So you can see there are three little sheep that will go in these little holes. And so what I decided to do for uh, how I'm going to work it, because the way the pattern is set up, you have the, pa the pattern is basically cut down where the tree trunk is. And so this side is broken up into two sections. So page one, two, three, four. So I'm working on page two, filling in everything up to the tree and then I'll stitch the tree and then do the clouds 
and then come over and do the bottom or maybe do the clouds and then do the other side. So I'm going to do everything over here first before I move and do the tree. So that is what how I decided to do it. That way then I can get away from this first edge. So again, going very nicely. I really like this because it's a, a, it's a very big difference from the confetti of London and the Chatelaine and Henry. So whenever I need a nice break, I can come to this and do much more solid colors, color blocks, which I don't mind doing. I like doing that occasionally. So this will be a nice change in palette cleanser. So there you have it. That is my project parade. So I my plans are to put Henry on the frame and the stand and to probably start him start the next page of him tonight. He is going to be my focus for a finish. And I'm saying that loosely because I know there's a lot to do on him left. There's a lot left to do on him. But I would really like to focus on him. But again, I'm not going to focus on him to the point where I get stressed out because I'm overwhelmed with confetti. So I'm going to focus on him. And then I'll move and work on mushrooms and by the bay as palette cleansers because I'm excited that I'm down to five projects so that is a nice relief for me and I really would like to get these projects even though they're very large projects I like to get a significant chunk of them done this summer so that maybe I can have some other starts this summer Because there's a lot I would like to do. Because I know I would really like to start Amsterdam soon. I would like to start my fairy town soon. Both are kits. Both are huge kits. And I'd like to start my Vickery Collection worlds. That I just got as a gift. So. There you have it. That is my project parade. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're having a wonderful birthday palooza, post birthday palooza, and I will be back tomorrow with some more fun and shenanigans uh, to round out the rest of the week. So have a great day, enjoy your stitching, and don't forget to always be creative. See you tomorrow.